Greetings YouTube, Fuzz here, welcome to another video and first of all excuse me for the rainy weather in WoW here, can't really control that uh, but hopefully that won't get your mood down as we actually work today on setting up how to play World of Warcraft through the Xbox One. Now it has been possible to play WoW with an Xbox controller for some time thanks to a whole bunch of add-ons which we are going to be making use of today but coupling that with the brand new app that Microsoft have released for the Xbox One called the Wireless Display app we'll actually be able to stream our game through to the console and play it through our home cinema system. Just like this. So here I am leveling up my Call to and Rogue, my recently created allied race and playing World of Warcraft as if it was any other Xbox One game. So I can literally just sit back on my settee comfortable with the Xbox controller in hand and everything is pretty much uh, as I hoped it would be. So I'm really, really excited to share this with you today, guys. And hopefully, uh, many of you are going to be able to get this working yourself. And if you do, please do share in the comments section how you find playing WoW through the Xbox One. Now, just before we get started, a few prerequisites of what you're going to require to get this process completed. First of all, a couple of basics, of course. You will require an Xbox One console along with a Windows 10 PC with World of Warcraft installed. Now, you don't actually need an active account since all the add-ons we're going to be using today will work with the free World of Warcraft account where you can level to 20, if that's what you want to do to get this working. But what you will require is both your Windows 10 PC and your Xbox One console connected to the same wireless network. Now, I have already gone through the wireless display setup, which is the new app that Microsoft released a couple of days ago. And I did that in a previous video, so I'll leave a link to that in the video description. Make sure you check that out if you haven't already before proceeding with this video. So I'm assuming now that you are able to connect your Windows 10 PC and the Xbox One together so that you can stream to it. And with that sorted, let's go ahead and set WoW up so that we can actually play this on the console. Right now then, I'm going to set up World of Warcraft so that it can be played on the Xbox One with the various add-ons and whatnot that we're going to need. And what we're going to do is just go through the list here of all the add-ons I'm going to suggest that you go ahead and download. I personally use the Twitch installer. You don't have to. You can download these manually. I will leave the links to all of these in the video description. So everything here from console port down to Skinner are the add-ons that you're going to or uh, well, at least I recommend that you use. Some of these are required, some just help add to the immersion, no pun intended. So console port, dynamic cam, immersion, sexy map, bartender 4, chatter, tidy plates and skinner. So make sure you go ahead, download those apps, ignore everything above console port, we're not going to be using those, uh, just these here. And then the only other program you're going to need, apart from the game itself of course, is a small application called WoW Mapper. So I will leave a link to this in the video description as well. And what this is going to do is actually allow World of Warcraft to interact with your Xbox One controller. Now, as we're playing the game on the Xbox One, the controller will be connected to the Xbox One, to the console. But for this initial one-time setup process here, you are going to be required to connect your Xbox One controller to the computer. So you can do this via a USB cable or via Bluetooth if you have those capabilities. Uh, either way, once you've connected the controller and you have WoW Mapper running, then it should say this, uh, X input controller connected. Uh, and then you know everything's okay. So the other thing as well is that we are always going to be using WoW Mapper when we're streaming to the Xbox One, but it will still connect the controller even though it's going to be normally connected to the console, not the computer. But for now, make sure it's on the PC. Okay, so that's pretty much everything we need in terms of downloads. Let's go ahead and fire up the game. Two things to note before we log into our character. First of all, I recommend using a lower level character, especially if you've never played World of Warcraft with a controller before, as in many ways it feels like a completely different game. So even if you're used to Mythic Raiding at max level, don't think you're going to be able to jump into this without having trained your muscle memory beforehand. Once you do get used to it, it's fantastic, uh, but as you're learning, I do recommend you take things slowly. So I'm going to be using this level 24 uh, Cool Tyran Rogue, since it's only got a few abilities and hopefully we'll get on okay. And the next thing I recommend is disabling all of those add-ons that we just installed. So make sure this is selected to all. That way you can keep them all deactivated on any other character that you play 
uh, whilst not using your Xbox One and it won't interfere with the interface. Uh, but also we're going to set these up one at a time. If we just go into the game with all of these activated, we're just going to have a whole mess on the screen to deal with and it's a little bit confusing. We don't want to do it. So bartender, chatter, console port, dynamic cam, immersion, sexy map, skinner and tidy plates. Make sure they're all deactivated. You can also deactivate your other uh, add-ons as well if you don't want them to get, into, uh, get in the way. But I've already done that so that's not going to be a big problem. Right then, so let's go ahead and enter the game world here. And then we're going to start setting these up. And I'll show you the settings that I'm using for each of these add-ons. Okay, so as you can see, uh, I'm pretty much starting afresh here. All my add-ons are disabled on this character. Uh, what I recommend is go to your add-on list and then only change these add-ons for the individual character that you're going to be playing as you're streaming onto the Xbox One. That way you can jump onto your other characters on PC and won't have to uh, have just, you know, the controller interface set up by default or anything. Okay then, so let's just go through these. We're going to begin with Dynamic Cam. So I'm just going to go ahead here and select that there. And then we're going to go ahead and select Reload UI. Now I've already set this up with the settings that I want. And as you can see, we've got a bit of a more uh, console camera here. So the cameras pan back behind our character, just offset from the shoulder. So this is just going to create a, a much more natural view as we're playing on console. Now, in order to go ahead and change the settings, we're going to head over to the menu. We're going to go to Interface, Add-ons, and then we're going to go ahead to Dynamic Cam here. And these are the settings I've got active, so I recommend you do the same. Uh, there's nothing else down there. And then if we just click this little plus sign and uh, go over to the Settings option, Make sure reactive zoom is turned off. And this is the important one now, situations. So I'm just going to select this at city since it's at the top. Basically, the situations are the various areas in the game. And you can select how the camera is going to work in those specific areas or situations. So in cities, this is the setting that I've got. Uh, I'll just go through this one. A little bit more in detail and then I'll just whiz through the others and you can pause the video and copy my settings. So first of all you want to make sure that enable situation is selected and on camera actions you're going to have this set to zoom and this is just going to determine how far away from your character the game is naturally going to zoom and you can go ahead here and select don't slow uh, and then I've set this to an option of 0 0.75 but that's going to determine uh, be determined by the situation so it won't be 0 0.75 for everyone now the zoom value you can have the zoom setting for most of these we're going to have zoom set to though we're going to use some of these others uh, as well so for this one for city we're going to have zoom set to and have it set to a value of around six and now the offsets this is how far away from the center of the screen your character will be placed uh, based on where the camera is going to be looking at you from or looking at your character so we're going to have a just shoulder offset and head tracking both activated for this particular uh, situation with the shoulder offset value of 1.2 and a head tracking of zero and that's pretty much it I'm just going to go through some of these others uh, some of the others here so you can go ahead and just pause the video and copy my settings here you might want to fiddle about with these to get something that's more comfortable for yourself but these are the settings that I'm happy with and seem to be working well for me. So they're the ones that I'm using. Uh, we've got World Indoors. Okay. And I'll just check any of these others. I haven't actually set up the dungeon ones yet for myself. Mounted is quite important since we will be mounting, obviously, quite regularly. Okay, there's my mounted settings. And also the other one is NPC interaction. So this is how the camera will operate when we actually speak to friendly NPCs. And in particular, the camera is going to offset a little bit so that we should hopefully have the NPC and our playable character in frame at the same time. And then we can go ahead and select whatever options they're going to offer us. Uh, you know, all hopefully very natural and it should work very, very well indeed. I don't think I've set the others myself, but you can pretty much play about with those and just keep similar settings. So if you're going to be raiding a lot on your console or doing dungeons, then you might want to go ahead and set those up as well. I'll probably just be spending time leveling in the outdoor world, so I'm not going to worry about them uh, myself. Next up then, a nice easy one actually, and that's going to be the immersion. 
oops, the immersion, uh, keep that off, uh, add-on. And what the immersion add-on is going to do is basically adjust our questing frames. So when we speak to uh, NPCs that give quests, and not just quests, but any kind of information, it's going to give them uh, a much more console-oriented chat box and quest window. And it's just very, very handy to have for this particular setup. I would actually recommend that once you've turned it on here, you do so in a place where you can actually interact with an NPC. I can't really be bothered to go and find one since I'm out in the middle of Duskwood. Uh, but just to make sure that it's all working, I happen to know that mine is. Since I've set it up previously, I've just reactivated it. There's no actual settings for you to go ahead and change for this one. So you don't need to worry about that. Uh, but one thing I would recommend is just when you do set it up for the first time, do so perhaps by a city guard. So say in Stormwind or, uh, or Grimmar or wherever you are so that you can go ahead and speak to those since they generally have quite a few options to share with you on locations that they can pinpoint on your map. So it's just a good way of testing that the Immersion app is set up correctly. Okay, so next up then, we're going to go to the add-ons menu and enable the Sexy Map. Uh, there it is. And Sexy Map should already be set up, yes. So this is another add-on which isn't really required, but one which I like to use I think it just adds a little bit more flavour to the overall interface. And I've set mine up down in this location. That's a pretty good location to have it. So it's just above all where the tool tops, uh, tool tips rather, are generally going to appear. Okay, and to set this one up, quite easy. Just head over to interface once more, add-ons, sexy map, and you can go through the various settings here. I've set my scale to 1.15. I like a nice... Uh, substantially sized map but you could have it smaller if you want to depending on how much of the screen real estate you want it to take up for me I'd like a slightly larger map seeing as how when I'm just sitting back on my settee for my screen when I'm playing on the Xbox I'm going to be at some distance so I would like to be able to see it properly okay any other settings uh, the only other thing really worth noting is also back on the main menu you can change the default presets I personally use the rustic style, which is this one you can see right here. I just like it. I think it looks nice and clean, tidy, and I like the square design as well. Some of these others are pretty awesome, though. Uh, I just personally find them slightly distracting when playing the game, so that's why I stick to this nice, clean, rustic, but that's entirely up to you uh, what you choose. Okay, now we're going to get into perhaps some of the more complicated parts of the setup, and in particular we're going to be enabling the Bartender app. Okay, so we're going to go ahead, select it, and reload. And straight away, you can see all my bars have disappeared. Uh, that's probably not going to be the case for you, but that's because I've set everything up. And what we're going to be using Bartender for is exactly that, to hide the default interface. But we don't want it to be gone. So as you can see, if I mouse over various things here, uh, they're going to... Uh, show back up again. We don't want the interface to be gone. We just want it to be hidden and that's what Bartender is going to do for us Now in order to access the settings for Bartender you need to do so from chat and type slash BT And as you can see there's quite a bit to go ahead and adjust here First things first then is the Blizzard art bar So I would strongly recommend that you get rid of that So this is the standard interface that Blizzard use uh, for their action bars and we're just going to go ahead and make sure that that's on. Uh, well, just make sure it's disabled so you can hide it completely. Now, that won't hide the actual action buttons, believe it or not. I know it looks like these are part of the action bars, but they're not. Uh, just go ahead and they will still be there. Uh, if I can perhaps show you that, maybe. Yep, there we go. So the action buttons are still there. They're just uh, hidden once you go ahead and select the fade out. Right, okay, so I'm just going to turn some of these back on, don't worry about that. Uh, there we go. So if I come out of stealth mode, most of you are probably not playing a rogue or a druid and are currently in stealth, so this is what you'll see no doubt. And what you want to do is go ahead, say we want to hide our first action bar here. Uh, the most of you are probably going to have bar 1 and bar 6 active since they're the two most used action bars. So on bar 1 we're going to head over to visibility. Don't go on to general here because if you click disabled, it will hide the bar, but it will actually get rid of it completely so you can't use the buttons. Instead, go over to visibility and select fade out. And now that's only hidden it. So if we mouse back down here, 
we can see it pops back up just to know that it's still there. Now obviously when we're playing on Xbox One, we won't be using the mouse, so that will stay hidden. Uh, if you still want to see it for whatever reason, you can increase the fade out percentage, so you can just have it slightly visible even when you're not mousing it, but I just like to have it hidden out completely. Because I am playing a rogue, uh, normally when I go into stealth mode, uh, we can see... Uh, hang on a minute, that didn't work quite as I expected. Okay, that's fine. No, if for whatever reason these buttons aren't disappearing when you go into fade out, you can click this button here and that will hide them completely even when you mouse over. But it doesn't seem to be necessary, so I'll keep that unticked for now. Okay, bar 6 is also the other one. I've currently got that uh, faded out uh, uh, already, but go ahead and do pretty much the same thing. And you can do that, to be honest with you, on every bar that you're currently using. Okay, so for me that's bar 1 and bar 6 on this character. Probably is for you as well. But if you've got others, then go ahead and repeat the process. That's visibility, fade out. Okay, and then drag this down to 0%. Now, if you are using stealth, as I am, you might want to go over to a stance bar. If you're on a hunter, you might choose a pet bar, for example. But stance bar, and we'll do exactly the same thing. Just click fade out on that just to hide it and it's gone away for good uh, well not for good but you know until we need to use it or see it or whatever the case may be uh, and to be honest with you that's pretty much it okay so it looks confusing and it is a bit confusing but the idea is you want to just hide your interface oh I've also done so on the micro menu and the bags which are other options on that list as well you just saw so I just went into visibility and clicked on fade out dragged it to zero percent right then uh, add-ons next and this time we're going to go ahead and activate the chatter add-on and all this is going to do is dim the chat box for us so before we go ahead and stream uh, we're going to create a new chat window here which I've already done this is the clean window you can actually create this just by selecting or right clicking on general here and selecting create new window and then you can go ahead and just type something in I just typed in clean and that creates create a new chat window, which I'll go ahead and select there. And as you can see, it's just given us a nice faded chat box. However, there's a couple of things you can do to stop messages from popping up in it. And that's if you just head over to interface once more, add-ons, there's the chatter app. Go to borders and backgrounds uh, and just make sure that, uh, yeah, that that is disabled. Okay, first of all, yeah, disable that. And then the other thing that we can do is go ahead to if I can just find it here I think it's called buttons oh there it is disable buttons make sure that's selected uh, as well so that uh, that just stops various buttons and what have you popping up and the next thing we want to do is just go back to the main chat window right click while we've got our clean tab selected so on the actual clean tab select settings and make sure all of these are deselected okay That'll just start messages popping up in that particular chat. Okay, right, next up then we're going to enable tidy plates. But before we do that, I recommend just going over to the normal game interface menu, heading down to names, and then just making sure that you have the following selected. So friendly players and minions, uh, personal resource display, larger name plates, flash on aggro loss, enemy players, minions, always show name plates and these options as well okay then we're going to head back over to the add-ons menu and we're going to go ahead and enable tidy plates I'll just enable the whole lot uh, as a matter of fact I think I already know it's the court theme that I like to use but you can have a play about with some of those themes to see which you prefer uh, you can activate them all and then just go and have a look at them that's not a problem okay so if we go ahead now back to the interface add-ons and tidy plates all I've done is selected quart and what tidy plates is going to do is just change the name plates basically above pretty much everything in the game enemies players uh, etc just gives it a nice cleaner look ideal for the console version of the game and you can go ahead and just fiddle about with the settings to your liking again this isn't really a required thing so I won't go into it into too much detail uh, but there it is uh, if you want to use it next up the Skinner oh, I keep doing it on all I mean to keep only doing it on stabby fuzz 
Uh, make sure you're just doing it on your individual character, otherwise you have to deactivate these and your other characters if you're not playing on the Xbox. Uh, so enable Skinner next. And Skinner can be a little bit confusing, so just do everything that I do here. Uh, first of all, we'll just go back to the clean tab there. And we're going to head over to the interface, add-ons, Skinner. And all you need to do is make sure the following is selected. Under backdrop, use default backdrop. Uh, background, make sure this is selected. Uh, ignore that one. Uh, let's go down to NPC frames. Make sure this is selected. Disable all NPC frames. Player frames, the same. UI frames, you've got it. And disabled skins, yep. And then we're going to head over to modules here. And on the button settings, uh, just make sure that all of these are unchecked okay if you've had to make any changes I haven't then you'll go ahead and type slash reload at this point okay uh, just so that you can you know put those settings into place and then we're going to head back over to the modules setting and this time we're going to go to viewport and this is how I've got it selected and the reason for that is you get this nice cinematic style to the game with these black bars you're not actually losing out on any information the resolution auto adjusts uh, but I just think it looks pretty awesome and that's how I've got it selected so make sure viewport is activated and I've only really adjusted uh, some of these settings to those values so go ahead and copy those if you want it as I've set it up okay we're getting there guys we're getting there uh, is there anything else I want to talk about no, I think we're pretty much done, apart from the actual main add-on, which is the con uh, controller add-on. So this is console port itself. Yep, we've done everything else. So we're going to go ahead and activate console port, action bar. You can activate the help as well if you want to. Uh, I'm not really bothered with keyboard, but I'll go ahead and activate it. And then all of these as well. So the only one I'm not really going to use is advanced. Uh, but you can go ahead and play about with that if you want to. And we'll reload the UI. And here we go. Dum -dum -dum. Yes, so this is how I've set up my console port. Now, I haven't actually changed a whole lot. All I've really gone ahead and adjusted is uh, a few settings, which I'll go through in a moment's time. Uh, but as you can see, we've now got the console interface set up here. Uh, I haven't actually set this up. Uh, in terms of being able to use the controller right now. Oh, no, we have. Uh, I did I set up Wow Mapper, didn't I? Which means if I head over to the Xbox controller here, which is now what I'm controlling, yep, all set up, ready to go. Can come in and out of stealth with the RT button. Yeah, good stuff. Right then, so let's go ahead and just go through some of the settings here. So you can do this on your controller or, you know, using the mouse, whatever you prefer. Uh, but basically, these are the controls as I've got them set up. Let's go over to the settings tab first of all. And if you haven't actually gone ahead and uh, used this app before, use this add-on, it might just ask you to calibrate your controller, but it'll tell you to do that and it'll just tell you what buttons to press. It's really simple. Uh, once you've done that, you can head over to the settings and just basically fiddle these to your liking. Uh, one thing I will mention to you is this interact button here I've enabled this to the X button or to the cross button the blue cross on the Xbox controller and the reason for that is this is what will allow you to enter combat with enemies and you'll need to choose a button that you want to enter combat with with an ability that you would enter combat with so for me for example if I'm in stealth as I am now that's going to be ambush uh, if I'm not in stealth it's going to be I think it's sinister strike or something uh, is key binded to the X button so that will just allow us to go ahead and activate that so that's what I recommend doing there uh, let's just go through some of these other options here as well um, hold L3 to pan the camera around uh, actually I do like that so we'll go ahead and activate it I'll set that to off because we've already set this up with the previous add-on and these are the other parts of the add-on that we activated help will just give you various help uh, information if you want to check through that uh, interface we'll ignore that for now uh, action bar this is the actual action bar that we've got down here so these are the various settings and as you can see I don't have a whole lot enabled for this 
Uh, one thing you can do is go ahead and just change how you want the buttons to be displayed here. Uh, personally, I'm happy with the current uh, button setup, which is just the default one. But you can go ahead and set this as you uh, wish. You can also go ahead and change the location of any of these using the button positioning. So if you want them smaller, perhaps more central to the screen, perhaps over you know, where the chat box used to be or something, then you can go ahead and change all these values. I couldn't really be bothered. I was happy with how the uh, default uh, was set up. And you can just mess about with some of these other minor changes as well. If you want to have your classy symbol appear, then you can certainly do that. Okay, I find it a bit distracting, so don't have that active, uh, but by all means, what I want and what you want may be two very different things. And there's not a whole lot of setup to go through here. In all honesty, the main setup is making sure that your key bindings are set to how you like it. And the way you do that is actually by adding the abilities to your action bars. So if you just press P to bring up your abilities, for example, uh, you can just set them over your action bars, which are hidden right now, but again, when you mouse over them, they do appear. So this is action bar number one, and as you can see, to set the keybind, you basically see the keybinds are automatically located over each of the action bar buttons, and uh, they correspond to the controller keys here. So I've placed ambush in number one, since the keybind for this is that X key. And as I did so, it automatically placed it here for me. So, for example, if I wanted to place, I don't know, blind uh, to the Y key on the Xbox controller, I'd place it in the number two slot, and there it is. Now, I wouldn't want to put blind there, but if I did, then there we go. Uh, the other thing to note as well is that you're not simply limited to these ten buttons. You can press the LB, I think it is. Uh, yeah, LB down. And then you've got a selection of various other commands as well. Uh, so, for example, if I come out of stealth here and press LB, you can see that I could go ahead and heal using, oh, what's this ability called, Crimson File. So I've got that selected on its own uh, hotkey window. I haven't got a whole lot of abilities at the minute, which is why these are variously sparse right now. And also LT will give you another set of commands as well. So, once again... Just go ahead and uh, drag things down to your various hotbars uh, that you've got active and it will show you on them which the hotkeys are uh, to bring those abilities in use. So for example LT plus X uh, would be this ability here, this position on the hotbar. Okay so personally I like to place things like my hearthstone and various mounts over on this section. If I come out of stealth you can see I've got my hearthstone so I've pushed the D-pad down. Uh, not with this open actually So let's say I was uh, back on the Xbox and there we go uh, And I push the d-pad down. I would start halving. I don't want to but I could and so too with the mounts, etc <laughs> Notice how the camera changes as well because of the various setups We've got with the dynamic cam depending on whether we're mounted or not. So let's go ahead and dismount and Stealth up. I guess we can go ahead and kill an enemy now can't we? So let's go ahead for the hatchling here. Look at that. Killed our first enemy using an Xbox controller. Uh, and we can go ahead, of course, and loot. And I've got auto loot selected uh, from the main interface option so we don't have to select loot manually there. Very good. Fantastic stuff. So the actual game now... It's all set up. I could go ahead and just adjust various other interface options such as where my portrait is at the top looks a little bit unnatural and my buffs and even my questing window. Uh, but for the sake of the tutorial, I think that'll do absolutely fine. As always, uh, you might want to set things up a little bit differently. But anyway, guys, I'm going to come away from the computer recording now and uh, we're going to connect things up to the Xbox. So here we are back at the Xbox, and this is what you'll do each time you want to go ahead and play the game on the console. Uh, go ahead and launch the wireless display so that you get the blue screen. Again, we set all this up in the previous episode, so I won't go through all that setup process again. And once you've got the blue screen, we're going to head over to the PC in order to launch the stream. Back at the PC, just before we start the stream, make sure you have the WoW Mapper uh, program open and that the controller is connected to the Xbox console now, not to the PC. 
okay so once we go ahead and start the stream then the computer will detect the controller and then we're just going to start the wireless connection as normal uh, and then once we've done that we'll go ahead and open the game righty ho here we go then so the stream has just started here you're seeing my main projector display which is coming through from the xbox and uh, you can see that the controller is still saying no active controller just as I launch the game and that's because I haven't enabled the gamepad functionality just yet so I'll do that in a moment's time here let's just skip ahead to when the game's loaded now to enable that functionality of the gamepad just push down the menu and back button simultaneously there and you can see that you get the gamepad icon pop up just for a moment or forgot to close my uh, chat log uh, not to worry about that but there we have it then guys that's the setup process complete everything running uh, we can now sit back, put our feet up, controller in hand, and just enjoy World of Warcraft through the Xbox One. So hopefully this uh, guide has been helpful to you. Let me know what you think in the comment section. I understand it was a bit of an arduous setup process, but it was only really a one-time thing. Now it takes about two minutes to boot the game up onto the Xbox One whenever you want to play it. So it really is uh, as simple as that now. Okay, folks, well, thanks ever so much for stopping by today. Please remember to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it, and make sure as well to stay tuned by subscribing to the Fuzzfinger Gaming YouTube channel. I'll see you next time. Have a fantastic day. Take care. <laughs>